Hey there everyone, welcome to HET. So we're back in the garage with yours truly. We got the wheels off, what could we possibly be doing today? So today we're going to be doing a little bit more of a fun upgrade. So we're going to be changing the OEM rubber brake lines to these new rated units that are stainless steel from StopTech. So you can see the part number there. So I'll have links to the description to these ones for the front and these ones for the rear as well as any other uh, tools or equipment or other parts that I use in this video. So please use those to support the channel. That's where all those funds will be going. Also remember to like and subscribe. So why would you want stainless steel brake lines? Well, let's go over the drawing bar and we'll discuss it. So your brakes are part of a hydraulic system which basically composes an incompressible fluid and then you'll have two plungers an input and an output so the for, this would be your master cylinder here and then here you would have all of the pistons and your brake calipers that are pushing on your pads which push on your rotors and help you stop your car so again the idea here is that when you press on your brake pedal here you're generating a pressure which is you know the force that you're applying to your brake pedal divided by the area of the piston inside your master cylinder which generates the pressure throughout the system so pressure that you're applying at your brake pedal is going to be equal to the pressure in the master cylinder, which is equal to the pressure uh, at the pistons inside your uh, brake caliper. So now, the, in order to create a greater force at your uh, you know, caliper assembly, you're going to have a greater area or more pistons, it's essentially the same thing, than the area that you're applying your force to in your master cylinder. So let's say that the area of all of our pistons in our caliper is twice the area of the piston inside our master cylinder. Well, we can see here that since pressure is equal to force divided by area, and if our area of our pistons in our caliper is twice that of the master cylinder, we're going to have twice the force. So we're having a full force multiplying effect. Now this does come at a trade-off for distance, right? So if we have, we're dealing with an incompressible system here. So the volume of the liquid in the system is always going to stay the same. So if we're, we're displacing, you know, some amount of fluid in our master cylinder, uh, we'll say that displacement is equal to D1. So this is the amount that, you know, we're essentially pushing down on our brake pedal. If our area at our, in the, of the pistons in our caliper assembly is twice the area of our uh, master cylinder piston, then we're going to only be traveling half the distance, right? Because the volume need to stay equal volume displaces equal to the you know area of the pistons times the displacement so to keep those that volume of displaced equal the distance displaced at the a2 is going to be half of the distance displaced at uh you know d1 so now what happens if we have some stretch in our brake lines because we're using rubber brake lines well, essentially now that the volume that we're displacing uh, through by pushing on the pedal is now not only going to be equal to the volume uh, displaced by our you know, pistons on our caliper, but it's also going to be, uh, we're also going to have to add in the volume displaced by our brake line stretching here. So we can see here that, you know, we're just going to let the, the area, um, you know, that our brake line comprises could be some constant here. But now we see that instead of before, we had, you know, the delta of the displacement uh, at our pistons in our brake caliper equal to one half of the displacement of our master cylinder. Now it's, you know, some constant less than that, which means that in order to achieve the same uh, displacement at you know our caliper here we have to gr apply a greater displacement at our master cylinder we have to push our pedal down or in essence we have a squishy pedal which we don't want so the same thing kind of applies if we have any you know air or vapor in our system 
our you know, displacement at the brake pedal is not going to just be equal to the displacement at the uh, pistons in the caliper, but we're also going to be using some of that displacement to compress uh, that air since we no longer have an incompressible system. So that's kind of why we're switching to stainless steel brake lines to get rid of some of that ex excess uh, you know, compressibility or uh, unwanted displacement. And that all of our displacement is going into uh, the displacement at the pistons in our caliper. Obviously, we've already got the car jacked up on jack stands at all four corners. So I'm not going to go over what you need to do that. Other specialty tools that you'll need would be a 12 millimeter socket and then some sort of, you know, either ratchet, breaker bar, uh, impact, whatever you, you want to take it, the bolts off with. So you'll need that for uh, this bracket here, then also the one that goes on to uh, the caliper itself, which we'll show later on. And then for the hard line here, you'll need either a line wrench or a crow's foot, but you want, you know, this thing that goes all the way around. Otherwise, you'll strip that out because it is aluminum. And uh, if you do strip that out, it, replacing the hard line is uh, not something that we want to be doing today. Okay. Then, of course, because we are dealing with brake fluid, which is highly corrosive and toxic, you know, we've got our safety glasses on. I got gloves. Uh, long sleeves as well, uh, which probably aren't long enough for this, but whatever. Anyway, we'll get going here. That's why we soaked everything in PB Blaster beforehand. Okay. All right, so now we got the brake line free. So now we'll work on taking out the hard line connection. So we'll make sure that our crow's foot ratchet here is set to loosen. Slip that on. All right, so we got that loose. Now be prepared, this thing is gonna start pissing fluid. So we're gonna to wanna to keep a drain pan underneath that. That's why we're wearing gloves. Keep in mind that this thing is also highly corrosive to paint. There's our hard line. So basically anything that this brake fluid stuff touches is going to get corroded. This actually isn't dripping too bad, but we'll still just put a, just kind of get a little towel, wrap it around there. And we might also want to wrap it around this end too, since we don't really want any junk getting inside of our hard line. We'll bleed this out um, later, but still want we'll to try to keep this as clean of a job as possible. All right, now that the hard line is out, we'll work on removing this bracket. It's all rusted. Okay, that wasn't too bad. All right. So now the hard line side of our old uh, hose is free. So now we need to undo the banjo bolt on the other side. So we'll go get that taken care of. 
All right, now admittedly, this isn't the best angle to try to get a camera shot, but we're gonna try our best. So the next thing we need to do is get this banjo bill off of the brake caliper, and then our brake line will be free. Now, some residual brake fluid is gonna come out of the line in the caliper, so we're gonna have this uh, paper towel here nice and handy. That we will work on getting this guy out of here. Oh, there comes that fluid. And there's our old brake line. So we'll wipe up all that fluid right away so we don't get stuff too corroded. All right, now to try to avoid as much leakage as possible, we're gonna try to get our stainless steel line right in. So we got our new banjo bolt and then we got the two copper crush washers here on either side of the line and we're going to start threading that in. This is not easy to do at this camera angle and film at the same time. So right now we're just starting to thread it in. Uh, we don't need to get it all the way tightened yet just so that's not leaking everywhere. it on there. Make sure that we're tightening. Okay. So that's good for now. Uh, and then we'll get the line or like the route routing figured out uh, next. All right. So now for the wire routing, I've loosened this guy up a little bit so we can move uh, this around. So then we're going to move this side into position and it should have some tabs that it more or less lines up with and then we just kind of move that back into place there we go cool all right now we got to get our bracket on so it should go on like this so that these um, uplifted edges here kind of provide a compressor or tension load on those uh, grooves, keeping everything nice and tight. It will be quite a tight fit getting it on there initially. You may need to use a little bit of percussive persuasion. Go. But now that tab's on there nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. All right. Now we work on Tightening up our hard line the rest of the way. And this doesn't need to be like super duper tight, just kind of tight enough that it's not going to leak. What we really want to avoid is stripping out that nut for the hard line. That is not good. That seems like it's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. It's getting 
them started by hand first so we're not cross threading. So our hard lines in, brackets in, we'll snug this up this guy, and then we'll get him torqued spec. Okay, so torque spec for the uh, banjo bolt is 14 foot pounds. You do want to be careful that you're placement of your route of your cable isn't moving too much while you tighten this down all right there we go all right our routing looks pretty good don't really see any major kinks in here um, so I'm gonna call this done so now we'll move on to the rears so now the rear isn't a whole lot different from the front so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it the main difference is just that instead of having a bolt holding in this mounting point in place you have just another one of these retaining clip type things this one is really really rusted so I'm just gonna take it off off camera all right, so if yours is really rusted like mine, the best way I found to do this is get like a little screwdriver, go under the car, and then kind of wedge it in underneath the tabs where it kind of spring clips in. Then you can just kind of break off the rust and get it free. All right. All right, then we'll uh, undo the hard line and then get this guy off just like the other side. You will need to reuse the uh, locking retainer for that bracket because there is not one provided in the kit. This one they do provide us with a retainer.
And this will be torqued to the same 14 foot-pounds. All right, and with that, you're done. Same thing on the other side. So I hope this video helped you. In the next video, we'll be going over how to bleed your brake system now that we've introduced a whole bunch of air into the system. And with that, you should be ready to go. Or I guess stop, I should say. See you guys next time.